please rise to join us for the national anthem. Leading us today is a 2002 graduate of Chicago Kent, Galen Caldwell. Galen received his BA in vocal performance in 1997 from the Chicago State University and currently holds the rank of sergeant in the Legal Affairs Division of the Chicago Police Department. Galen? dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the You may be seated. Thank you, Galen, and welcome to the 2014 Chicago Kent Commencement. Today, I'm pleased to welcome our graduating class, as well as their families and friends, to celebrate this great milestone. We celebrate your graduation as a community and know that without family and friends, this milestone would not have been possible. Joining me on the stage are faculty, alumni, and friends of Chicago Kent, including our speaker for today, Illinois State Senator and Chicago Kent alumnus, Kwame Raoul. What a year and what a three or four years it has been. You've learned about labor and employment law from Professor Marty Mallon, who recently was reappointed by President Obama to the Federal Services Impasse Panel. You've learned constitutional law and constitutional history from Christopher Schmidt, who was honored for writing the best paper of any academic in the country within the first eight years of teaching. You've learned legislation from Carolyn Shapiro, who this semester was appointed Illinois Solicitor General, the legal officer responsible for representing Illinois in both the state and federal courts. And you've worked in the clinic with Ed Krauss, who was appointed to serve on the United States Health and Human Services Advisory Committee on Childhood Vaccines. And you have mastered intricate jurisdictional puzzles, convoluted legal doctrine, and critical drafting and litigation skills. And some of you have brought home a lot of hardware to the school. In Moot Court, you triumphed at the National Heritage Law, the William McGee National Civil Rights, and the National Veterans Law Competitions. And both the appellate and trial teams triumphed from the regional rounds of the most prestigious tournaments. And others of you shined in externships, summer employment, and in volunteering countless hours in the public interest. This ceremony then is a culmination of years of hard work. You've gained the necessary skills to serve corporations and governments, individuals and social causes. You are well positioned to parlay those skills into professional success in a constantly changing environment. Today, however, is more about beginnings than endings. I wish you well in your careers, whether in law or elsewhere, and I encourage you to use the skills you've learned ambitiously, but with integrity and civility. Our first speaker today represents the JD class of 2014, this year's valedictorian, UD. Originally from Suzhou, China, UD learned 
earned his bachelor's and master's degree in electrical engineering and informational science from the University of Science and Technology of China. He came to Chicago in 1998 and earned a Master of Science degree in Electrical Engineering and Computer Science from the University of Illinois at Chicago in 2001, and then an MBA from the University of Chicago Booth School of Business in 2008. He attended Chicago Kent in the evenings while working as a senior software programmer for the Citadel Investment Group. He earned his degree here in December and continues to work at Citadel, which is one of the world's largest equity funds. Yu's academic record is astounding. He received the highest grade in 19 of 27 graded classes, by far the highest percentage in recent memory, and a record that may stand for quite a while. Please welcome Yu Di. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I know I am not a familiar face to a lot of you, since I was a part-time evening student and have always been busy balancing the study with my day job and with my family, and have not been on campus outside class time for much. So from the moment I got this speech assignment, I was thinking, and maybe a lot of you are now thinking too, what would a part-time evening student who has participated in practically nothing else than classes, not even student groups and social gatherings, be able to communicate on this important day? What do I have in common with all of you that would enable me to stand here confidently? And I concluded that there are indeed two things that I have in common with all of you. First, we all came to Chicago Kent with a desire to learn the law and to make a difference with the knowledge that we would acquire. I still remember that during my tour of the school as an admitted student, when I still had the chance to back out, I was presented with a sample schedule of class for the fall semester that looked simply overwhelming to me. I had gone through an evening MBA before that, so I was no stranger to evening classes. But even that did not fully prepare me for a schedule that ends at 9 p.m. or later each night and four days a week. So I started to think, why exactly have I decided to do this? And what do I really expect to get out of this? And my conclusion at that time was, I have decided to do this because I want to learn the law. I expect to get a great education that can serve me and maybe others well in my future life. And it would be worth the four years of potentially grueling and nauseating study that lay ahead of me. <laughs> now the four years have passed. And I feel that I have made the right choice of not backing out at that time. Kent has truly given me the great education that I hoped for, and I have learned so much. And the years did not turn out to be grueling or nauseating at all. If anything, they have been among the most enjoyable years of my life, mostly because I had the pleasure of being around so many brilliant and warm friends, and despite my lack of social life, had experienced a camaraderie and a bonding that have not been familiar to me since my long past college days. Thank you, friends, and thank you to all the family members without whose support we would not have been able to arrive here. And this brings me to the second thing I have in common with you, which is that we have all received a great education from Kent, and it is not just intellectually fulfilling, but also fun and memorable. I don't know which classes and professors would be most favorite to each of you, but I have always remembered the jokes that Professor Brill poked almost every taught class at Dean So, the songs that Professor Parrott kept performing at the end of his civil procedure classes, and the colorful anecdotes that Professor Kling kept narrating. Thank you, professors and staff members who have given us such a wonderful education experience. As expected of this genre of speech, I would like to wrap up with some sayings of ancient wise men. I have chosen Seneca the Younger, a man achieved in both eloquence and financial means. In the 17th of his moral episodes, he urged his readers to devote themselves first and foremost to philosophy, that is, to the love and the pursuit of knowledge, and to secure this ideal before anything else. Over the past three or four years, we have all devoted ourselves to knowledge, 
and we have secured it with our effort, with the support of our families, and with the help of the wonderful faculty and the staff of Kent. Now, we can move on to the less important objectives, such as wealth, with confidence, just like Seneca himself has done nicely. Thank you, everyone. This year, our class LLM speaker is Monica Hernandez, a graduate of the International Intellectual Property Law Program. Each year, Chicago Kent graduates almost 100 lawyers from around the world who come to Chicago for a year to gain the legal knowledge and skills necessary to compete in a global legal economy. Originally from a small town in Colombia, Monica studied law at Sergio Arboleda University in Bogota, a valued partner school of Chicago Kent where she was the coordinator of the Human Rights Initiative and helped research and draft a digest of Latin American jurisprudence dealing with the rights of indigenous peoples. Prior to coming to Chicago, Kent, she worked as a consultant for the United States Agency for International Development's Trademark and Patent Office in Colombia. After graduation, she plans to sit for the New York and California bars and will work as a researcher in IP for Sergio Arboleda and hopes to work again in some capacity for Colombia's government. Please welcome Monica Hernandez. Um, it's too high. Deans, distinguished members of the faculty, loving parents and families, ladies and gentlemen, and dear fellow graduates, it is an honor to stand here before all of you this afternoon. Just a couple of weeks ago, I found myself recalling all those amazing moments lived here. Starting from the orientation day and the treasure hunt game, through the Halloween costume party, and the long cold days at library. I realized this was some of the most incredible, enriching, and challenging experiences of my life thus far. Being an LLM student is not easy. Most of us are somewhat of an initial mixture part lawyer practitioners, part academic student. We have come from all over the world. We have suspended our lives, our careers, and professional projects, and left families and friends behind. All to have one more year and as a student, accomplish our goals, and of course, have all the free food and drinks Chicago Kent College can provide. <laughs> I must say the student law in a foreign country and in a foreign language open one's mind and make us contemplate issues from other perspectives perspectives. The facilities of Chicago Kent were witnesses to our multiple coffee break legal and political debates. In our classroom, we trembled with the Socratic method and learned to think dualism like never before. Definitely, we have all been lucky to be here and have experienced this unique opportunity to open doors to new ways of thinking, to diverse cultures, and to learn different legal approaches. LLM classmates, your curiosity, critical analysis, intelligence, and drive are inspiring. And it has been truly humbling to learn alongside the most clever and engaging people I have ever met. We have studied, played, and most importantly, we have encouraged and empowered one another to do our best and be the best. Whether from Brazil, Spain, Switzerland, Argentina, France, or United States, this is just to name a few, we are now part from, of the best and brightest the world has to offer. LLM Fellows, this experience is almost over, but it is well known that all finals are also new beginnings. Let's savor this day, enjoy it, and remember this year at what it represents, a year full of academic and professional achievements and bridges built between nations and cultures. Let us save it in our hearts and embrace the new opportunities that lie ahead. In closing, I would like to extend my gratitude to all the people that made this year possible. Thank you, God, for being the sower of dreams. Thank you to family and friends for your support. Thank you, Dean Crane and Dean Harris, for helping us to fulfill our dreams and give us the opportunity of enjoying this extraordinary journey. Many thanks to all the entire body of professors for sharing with us not only your vast knowledge and expertise, but for your patience and encouragement for making of us high qualified practitioners. Thank you all for doing such an outstanding job. 
Now it's time to go out into the world and achieve great things in the law in our home countries. It's time for a new commencement. It is time to share the ideals of law and justice, to work to promote cross-cultural understanding, and to be assuming the social responsibilities given to us. But remember, everybody will be hearing about the changes brought to this world by the people who have been shaped and defined by this year here in Chicago at Chicago Kent College of Law and from this truly exceptional LLM class. Thank you all. Let's celebrate. Thank you to this year's student speakers. And you as students have accomplished so much and excelled in so many ways. But at the same time, you have, for years past, selected a number of students for their remarkable service to the community and legal profession. These Bar and Gavel Awards are your way of recognizing students or peers whom you think have accomplished so much. Please stand when I call your name and hold any applause until the end. Justin Cabohut, Alexander Sasha Kakabadze, Helen Kim, Colette Capone, David Liberty, Rebecca Lyon, Kathleen Mallon, Esther Miganelli, Megan Morton, Yoon Nam, and Megan Sipple. Congratulations. You may be seated. 20 guests with us on stage are alumni or members of the Chicago, Kent, and Illinois Institute of Technology community. They have the special opportunity this afternoon to hood their children, spouses, and other relatives and welcome them to the ranks of the alumni of both Chicago, Kent, and the Illinois Institute of Technology. And those are Rebecca Clow, who will be hooded by her father, Dr. David Clow, class of 93, Eileen Bustamante Cordero, hooded by her stepfather, Martin Rosenthal, the class of 1980, Kyle Delphin, hooded by his cousin, Cecile Martin, class of 2002, Martha Druitt, hooded by her parents, Christina Druitt, a MPA grad of 07, and Michael Druitt, who is a master's grad of 96, Jory Eisenberg, hooded by her mother, Nadine Eisenberg, who earned her Bachelor of Science degree in 78. John Flanagan, hooded by his father, Thomas Flanagan, who graduated just yesterday in 1963. Michael Glink, hooded by his father, Stephen Glink, class of 1981. Martin Gould, hooded by his brother, Jack Gould, class of 2011. William Grossi, hooded by his father, William Grossi, class of 79. Kristen Jersey, hooded by her father, UV Jersey, class of 1985. Elizabeth Kelleher Paz, hooded by her father, Richard Kelleher Paz, class of 1988. Rob Cohen, hooded by his father, Bruce Cohen, who's the third member of the class of 79 to enjoy this honor this morning, this afternoon. Samuel Morasso, hooded by his brother, Bruno Morasso, class of 2012. Megan Mulherin, hooded by her aunt, Lori Fanning, class of 2000. Carolyn Neville, hooded by her uncle, Pat Morris, class of 1983. Alex Ronning, hooded by his father, John Ronning, um, who's a, a bachelor of 1986. Emmett Shaughnessy, hooded by his father, Brian Shaughnessy, again, the class of 1979. And Danielle Tinkoff, hooded by her father, Bruce Tinkoff, class of 1982. It is now with great pleasure that I represent the 2014 graduating class of Chicago Kent, starting with the candidate for the Masters of Laws, followed by the candidate for the Juris Doctor degrees. I call upon Associate Stephen Soule, Associate Dean Stephen Soule, to introduce the individual graduates. Dean Soule. Thank you, Dean Krent, and greetings to our graduates and guests. On pages 10 and 11 of today's program, you will note that certain 2014 Juris Doctor candidates have earned a certificate in one of the following programs, business law, criminal litigation, environmental and energy law, intellectual property law, international and comparative law, labor and employment law, 
litigation and alternative dispute resolution, and public interest law. Only the names of those graduates who are present today will be read. Please hold your applause until all candidates have received their degrees. I now have the honor of presenting the 2014 recipients of the Master of Laws degree in Financial Services Law, U.S. International and Transnational Law, International Intellectual Property Law, and Taxation. Receiving the degree of Master of Laws in Financial Services Law, Gabriela Mancuso Firmback. Ilshat Karamov. Yi Lu. Yi Hong Lu. Saiping Nu. Taylor D. Perdomus. Kian Tian. James Ren. Chiran Wan. Xiao Yu Chang, Guo Zhu, receiving the degree of Master of Laws in U.S. International and Transnational Law, Natalia Baranchin, Fei Chen, Chen Junyi. Ji Chen, Lu Chui, Guillaume Kusamano, Ning Ning Ding, Joanna. Galagda. Ji Wung Han. Yan Jin. Dominic M. Kaup. Roman Kostaria, John Hyung Kim, Nutnaran Kumfan, Matilda Laranche. Vincent Latournery, Jin Lee, Yu Ting Lee, Sihui Liu, Yu Lu. Jing Ting Ma, Suwanan Mai Sung Di, Camilla Meyer,
Louise Corpella Martini, Xianling Mu, Philip C. Paul, Anna Poskas, Ting Ting Chi, Daniel M. Reka, Olena Romanovska, Sampradtana Sangsur Iekta. Dion Alexander Slata, Dion Alexander Slota, Yuri Stoiko, Alexian Stroyaso. Min Su Aishi Takahashi Marek L. Wachtelberg Narit Wantarun Wantrakun Shokjan Shu Yang Tianjia Joanna Zagruska Chenbing Zhang, Wei Zhang, Yuan Zhang, Yu Chen Zhang. Li Chang, Andre Dashkovitz, Monica Hernandez Jimenez. Andre Pulkevich, Shegjia Li, Yuli Lu, Degang Ma. Xinlong Shen, Yi Song, Hailong Sun, Paula 
Tovar Alfonso. Chao Xiao Guan. Xunjie Xu. Yun Shu, Bai Shu, receiving the degree of Master of Laws in Taxation, Jessica Zapeda. That concludes the presentation of the candidates for the Master of Laws degree. Please join me in congratulating the graduates. I now have the honor of presenting the 2014 recipients of the Juris Doctor degree. For those fall graduates who have taken and passed the bar exam, I will append Esquire when calling their names. Again, please hold your applause until the names of all the candidates have been read. Jeremy B. Abrams. Christopher J. Acuna. Zane Afzal. Emily Elisa Esquire, Douglas T. Allor, Emily H. Anderson, Louise Arnott, Arul Jothi Arun Esquire, Gabriella Azro, Daisy Ayan. Donnell Babineau, Chance W. Baditcher, Nicholas Barcelona, Michael D. Barnes. Bhutishig Bhutsunbran. Amanda J. Bell. Jacob B. Berger. Marco A. Berrios. Claudia V. Bertaki, Corey M. Bieber, Tyra Lynn Blue, Benjamin L. 
Boroff. Daniel S. Bauer. Moreno Brannis, Jr. Amanda K. Brokamp. Nicholas A. Bross. James M. Brown. Kenneth P. Bruns. Samantha Alexandria Buckley. Fares M. Brahanadin. Charles P. Burns. John M. Buscemi. Justin R. Kabuhut. Ramson Cannon Esquire. Sienna H. Carpenter. Kelly M. Carson Esquire. Danielle Carey. Peter J. Casada. Rebecca Cawley. Yvonne D. Chen. Songmei Cheng. David A. Ciccarelli. Jacob M. Joshelski. Stacy M. Cisla. Noel C. Cislo. Rebecca R. Clough. Aileen Bustamante Cordero. <laughs> Jessica L. Coutre. Andrea M. Katu. Elise D. Crawley. Elizabeth M. Crotty. Brian J. Crump. John P. Dara, Esquire. Bridget M. Doherty. Christina E. Deotete. Ricky Lee Davidoff, Esquire. 
Rochelle D. Davis. Juliana C. DeAngelis. Lisa Marie DeLeon. Kyle W. Delphin. U.D. Esquire. Gregory S. Deerdorf. Holly D. Dobler. Brian K. Dooley. Brett E. Dorn. Emily Rose Marie Dosh. Anna C. Drendel. Martha E. Druitt. Rodney L. Edwards. Crystal M. Eggleston. Jory C. Eisenberg. Lauren Christina Elliott. Justin J. Urcoli, Bradley P. Erdman, Holly Jean Eubanks, Leah J. Eubanks. Robert S. Fokori, Esquire. John P. Flanagan. Jamie B. Flatley, Esquire. Shaley A. Formanick. Ben Fox, Esquire. Stephen M. Franklin. Lindsey R. Friedman. Stephen Friedman. D. 
Di Fu. Stephen R. G. Matthew H. Gelfond. Asha Saida George. Heather Lee Glazer. Michael J. Glink. John Golden, Edward J. Gonzalez, Laura R. Gottlieb, Martin D. Gould, Diana M. Green, Michael Griffin, William T. Grossi, Gavin E. Halper, Esquire. Mark A. Hamburger, Esquire. Alex S. Hansons. Ilana R. Harris, Esquire. Ariane R. Hosanna Lizade. Alec J. Hauserman. Jenna L. Hennig. Joaquin Hernandez. Joshua P. Herzog, Heather N. Hilgers, Margaret E. Hill, Catherine L. Hoffey, Melinda M. Hoffman, Esquire. Patrick Hoover. Mireya Hurtado. Philip S. Juan. Hannah J. Joukowsky. Ryan D. 
Chansky. Christina J. Jaremus. Siang Il Chiang Esquire. Kirsten Lauren Jersey. Aaron Jimenez. Alexander Sasha Kakabadze. I don't want his family to miss it, so I'll say again. Alexander Sasha Kakabadze. Ryan E. Cantor. Mordecai E. Kaplan. Scott Matthew Kaplan. <laughs> Dustin J. Carrison. Roman Kashuba. Zeke N. Katz. Brian M. Keating. Joseph Edward Keevy. Elizabeth A. Kelleher Paz. Matthew T. Kennedy. Danielle E. Kessenbaum. Helen N. Kim. Eric J. Kirkman. Courtney H. Klein. Alexander John Connect. Rob L. Cohen. James D. Constantopoulos. Colette Lynn Copan. Catherine Cosardis, Esquire. Chris Tainas. Brian P. Laurie. Scott T. Lekowitz. Catherine A. Lee. Roger Lashinsky. David E. Liberty. Philip G. Lichfield. 
Zinan Liu. Margaret Meredith Livingston. Kevin P. Lolly. Monica Long. Yin Lu. Rebecca V. Lyon. <laughs> Kathleen M. Mallon. Brad. Mander, Anna N. Manfrey, Kira N. Manzo, Samuel R. Marasso. Emily Markeski Dorner, Maria E. Martin Esquire, Nathan R. Martin, David R. Martinez, Catherine M. Martinez. Daniel Masolia. Anthony Lee May. Evan S. McGuire. David G. McKenzie. <laughs> Philip K. Micah. <laughs> Esther S. Mignanelli. Grant J. Miller. Mina Mineva, Michael A. Mincer, Courtney C. Mixon. Ashley M. Montalbano, Ryan Moore, Elizabeth Morataya Esquire. Megan A. Morton, Constance J. Moylan, Megan C. Mulherin, 
An Sun Nam. Caitlin M. Nason. Rebecca E. Neubauer. Carolyn T. Neville. Irvin B. Nevitt. Colleen M. Nickel. Andrew E. Nodestein. Oyinya Chuku Wabuaku. William O'Brien. Ashling O'Lara. Matthew J. Obiala. Andrew P. Ogletree. Lee C. Olaf Esquire. John A. Orednik. Robert Benjamin Palladino. Millie Parcara. Richard T. Pasanisi. Alexander I. Paso. Ronak A. Patel. Stephen D. Powells. David W. Pelsu. Jing Peng. Celine Christofferson Peterson. <laughs> Stephanie T. Puente. Jared W. Radkiewicz. Gintada G. Radvilla, Esquire. Valerie R. Rady. Evan G. Reed. Cole B. Richter, Esquire. Stephanie J. Radella. Brittany Rivera. Gavin E. Robinson. Rachel Rodriguez Nichols. 
Amalia M. Romano. Alex Anthony Ronning. Nelson M. Rosario. Rachel Rosenblum. Daniel C. Roth. Tatiana Ruderman. Jessica J. Yu. Jessica M. Jakovitz. <laughs> Olivia A. Sarmis. Gretchen L. Schmidt. Amelia K. Schreiber. Joseph Sexauer. Emmett M. Shaughnessy. Alessandra M. Silva. Justin Andrew Silva. Mine Sim. Megan M. Sippel. Eric D. Sirk. Ellen L. Smith. Courtney D. Summer. Nicholas A. Spencer. <laughs> Stephanie M. Spritz. <laughs> David J. Starshap. Devin J. Steinmeier. Alexander Stevens. Michael C. Stevenson. Carrie M. Stickle. Gregory Z. Sussman. Edward Thomas Sweeney. Sun Yang Tang. Lindsay R. Taylor. Michael C. Terranova, Esquire. Bradley S. Thomas. Acacia M. Thornton. 
Danielle M. Tinkoff. Matthew A. Toddy. Monica W. Trujillo. Eric Zachary Turner. Jesus Orlando Valentino. Hanan E. Vandrill. Lauren C. Vandersloos. <laughs> Brittany Elise Walls. Michael P. Warren. Orion Gregory Webb. Brett J. Weber. Samantha Weisel. Michelle Lynn Wesley. Brent K. Whitlock. Ting Ting Yang. Lauren D. Zabrin. Matthew D. Zorobsky. Stephen R. Zdanowitz. Dean Krent, this concludes the presentation of the candidates for the Juris Doctor degree. Will all the degree candidates please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of the Illinois Institute of Technology, I confer upon you the degree of Master of Laws or Juris Doctor and admit you to all of its rights, privileges, and obligations. Please join me in once again congratulating the class of 2014. You may be seated. And now I am privileged to introduce our concluding speaker for today's ceremony, Kwame Raoul, a 1993 graduate of Chicago, Kent. Raoul has been an Illinois State Senator since 2004 when he was appointed to fill the vacancy of then U.S. Senator and Chicago, Kent commencement speaker, Barack Obama. Kwame has earned great respect from both sides of the aisle in Springfield and is tapped to take on the most pressing challenges that we in Illinois face. After decades of pension failure, Kwame was appointed to help a bipartisan commission to forge a compromise, and he succeeded 
where prior legislatures had failed. Challenges to that compromise, of course, are winding their way through the court system. And when the legislature earlier needed to redistrict, Kwame again served as a lead to ensure a compromise consistent with pluralistic values. His independence, his integrity, are beyond reproach. Kwame also serves as a partner in the Chicago office of Quarles and Brady, focusing on employment and higher education. In 2013, Kwame was selected as a business leader of color by Chicago United, and in 2011, he received the Jenner and Block Award from the Center on Wrongful Conviction for his contributions to improving the criminal justice system here in Illinois. Last fall, we at Chicago Kent honored him as one of Chicago Kent's 125 alumni of distinction. Please join me in welcoming Kwame Ruhl. Well, I was going to uh, hire a few people to come in and uh, scream in a high-pitched voice uh, once you said my name. There you go. <laughs> You'll get your check at the end. <laughs> you know, as uh, Dean Krant, uh, faculty, graduates, family and friends, uh, you know, I've done commencement addresses before, but as I shared with some faculty members who taught me some 20-some years ago, uh, I've never been as nervous as I am right now because I'm coming home and this is a bit different. Uh, so I almost did a Condoleezza Rice and didn't show up because uh, I was going to say Ralph Brill was going to protest me. <laughs> but I'm here and congratulations. Look at each other. Um, you'll see each other again. Don't assume that you won't. You know, uh, I ran across some of my fellow graduates after not seeing them for about 11 years when I uh, came into the Senate chambers and I realized I had two classmates from, the Chicago, from Chicago Kent as my colleagues in the Illinois State Senate, uh, uh, A.J. Wilhelmy and Randy Hulgren. And as I presented my first difficult bill, I was being cross-examined by uh, then Senator, now Congressman Pete Roskam. And I, I was, did a fair job at responding to his questions to, to the extent that he came over to me and said, you did a great job. Where did you go to law, law school? I said, Chicago Ken. He said, so did I. No wonder why you could answer my questions. <laughs> and then as we tackled pension reform, I was fortunate to have our chief legal counsel for the Illinois uh, Senate Democrats, Eric Medeer, another alum of Chicago Kent. So you will see each other again because you are well prepared and you, your, your preparation will take you to places where you will cross paths again. All that said, you've heard those to suggest that this is a, not an opportune time to be coming out of law school. College graduates are listening to this and law school enrollment is on the decline. But I'm going to challenge that conventional wisdom and tell you why I think it's a perfect time for you to challenge the status quo with the law degrees and more importantly the training that you've re received from Chicago Kent. Yes, you will have a dismal outlook if you're in uh, what I came to know as the law student syndrome. In my second year at Kent, I took a negotiations class and my professor taught us about the law student syndrome. Law student syndrome is where competition obstructs the individual passion and creativity from the career decision-making process and replaces it with prescribed pathways to revered positions of success. It's a place where failure and mistakes are unacceptable and not valued. The law student system, quite frankly, begins before law school when you're taking that LSAT prep class and you're competing to get the highest score so you can get into the so-called top tier law schools. Once you're accepted and you begin, begin your law school career, you fight to be in the top five or six percent of your class and make law review. You compete for a summer associate position at a major firm because you, that's what you're told you're supposed to do. You accept to be redirected, once you get there, to a practice group other than that that you're interested in, 
because you're competing against your fellow summer associates for that summer, for that associate position after graduation. And once you become an associate, you're competing against your fellow associates to get on that partnership tra track and make partner. You, know, you pass the bar, work six or seven days a week, billing 2,000 plus hours. And over the years, and finally, you make partner. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> but the competition's not over. Once you make partner, you try to edge out your colleagues to drum up business and become the firm's top rainmaker. Years and even decades later, you look back and you wonder if you did what you intended to do when you first aimed at going to law school or if you just fell into the law student syndrome, following a path that was set by the competition, not your individual desire. You ask yourself, did I do everything this legal education gave me the capacity to do? Well, I challenge you to ask those questions now instead of 20 years from now. And consider how to make the best use of your, dis your, your degree before you do go down the narrow roads that restrict your options rather than broadening your horizons. So I speak from experience because to say my own career has been unorthodox is an understatement. A career planning advisor would probably look at my trajectory and call it a path to nowhere. But the training I acquired at Chicago Kent and the unexpected real world experience I lived along the way equipped me to serve as an advocate in more meaningful ways than I could have imagined as a law student. If there was one thing I was sure about in law school, it was that I was never gonna be a prosecutor. But somehow through some mix up, I ended up on the interview list for the Cook County State's Attorney's Office. I shrugged it off and decided to treat it as a interview skills development experience. Well, by the time I got to the third interview, it was the only option I had left. I needed a job. As it turned out, I began my career in the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, and it was a great place to develop my skills, learn about criminal law, and refine my oral advocacy skills in a way that my peers in more coveted positions could not. I bounced around the state's attorney's office doing criminal appeals and bounced to workers' comp and to traffic cases and to juvenile child protection and then delinquency. My uncertainty had me on a slow track of progression within the office. So I left, hung out my own shingle, started a private practice, which was ultimately unsuccessful. And while my peers on well-trodden tracks to success in their respective silos, I wasn't sure if anywhere my career had headed. Yet running my own small practice was hugely beneficial to my development. It required me to develop a head for business. It pushed me to view my legal acumen as an economically valuable commodity. I took many cases on the payment plan where the only payment I ever got was the down payment. But I zealously represented my clients nonetheless. My father was a community physician who spent his life serving those in need and never turned away a patient because of their inability to pay. It was important to me to live out his values in my chosen profession. Well, that was a formula for going out of business, but I loved it. Eventually, I took a position with the City Colleges of Chicago that exposed me to employment and labor law, but allowed me to earn a regular paycheck. I negotiated contracts with various labor groups, but I still wasn't on track to that partnership. I wasn't on any track at all. Bar Barack Obama, who had just been elected to the U.S. Senate. I wasn't the likeliest candidate either on paper or in the minds of political odds, odd makers. But I was able to point out to the people in the room 
that I had applied Illinois law in just about every conceivable circumstance because of the variety of positions I've had. Whether it was employment and labor, child welfare, personal injury, higher education, workers' comp, criminal law, I'd been a small businessman, I'd prosecuted the accused and defended them. The diversity of my experience, both within the law and with people in the community, impressed the men and women who eventually appointed me to the position. While I was driving down my winding road I thought that thought, I thought went nowhere, I felt I was on my way to becoming just another lawyer whose accomplishments no one would know. In fact, it was these eclectic, unorthodox collections of experiences that gave me the real world connections and the know-how that it has enabled me to do everything that I've done in the Illinois State Senate. My criminal law experience prepared me for my drive to abolish the death penalty in the state of Illinois and push for smart on crime criminal justice reforms. To, yeah, you can clap. <laughs> to resist the urge to push for the removal of ju uh, judicial discretion and resist the urge to push for mandatory minimums and enhanced penalties, no matter how powerful the politician seeking them is perceived to be. My experience as a volunteer election day attorney drove me to sponsor the Illinois Voting Rights Act and to put just this year an uh, amendment on the ballot to get constitutional uh, protections against voting right violations that we've seen occur in other states. My time in the state's attorney's workers comp division, which I thought was gonna be totally useless, gave me the skills and the know-how to uh, spearhead sweeping workers comp compensation reforms in a long negotiation. My negotiation skills I refined while at the city's colleges of Chicago negotiating labor agreements were useful as I was chaired the conference committee to come up with a pension reform package. My otherwise nonlinear and ill-advised career path became a huge asset. So I suggest to you not to despair. If, if your career does not start out the way you've been driven to believe that it should, you will get to where you're destined to be. I mentioned bef that before I was appointed to Senate, I, I, I lost three consecutive runs for office. So I'm a three-time loser. Whether in criminal law or in baseball, the notion of three strikes is significant. The reality is that in life, you're not completely out after three strikes unless you send yourself back to the dugout and just stay there and quit. Even in baseball, three strikes does not kick you out of the game unless it's the bottom of the ninth and two outs. <laughs> the most successful home run hitters in baseball strike out with regularity. You have a greater chance of getting a hit your next at bat if you learn something from your last at bat. If you are prepared not just for the opportunity, but for failure, the lessons of your failure will not go to waste and your failure will not be permanent. A couple of years ago at a commencement address, I told a group of college graduates about Adam Dunn. Now, some of you all aren't from Chicago and some of you all may not be Sox fans or Cub fans, but are, are there any Cub fans here? <laughs> all right, so you all don't need to listen anymore. You already know about failure. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Adam Dunn was signed by the White Sox in 2010, and in April 2011, he had an emergency appendectomy. And after sitting out five, nine, five games, he returned to play a horrible season. He batted 159, hit only 11 home runs, and he set a new team record with 177 strikeouts. But something very interesting happened the next year. He improved drastically. He made the all-star team, and a, during the course of the, that season, he led the American League 
in home runs, but he also led the league in strikeouts. To be successful, you have to endure the strikeouts, whether that's sending out hundreds of resumes with no response, changing careers, midlife, or losing a business. Through it all, you can have confidence that the skills you've obtained at Chicago Kent, through its appropriate balance of scholarship and practical training, because those skills give you the luxury of falling and getting back up. They let you, by trial and error, seek out how best to leave your mark on the legal profession and on the world. You hear about prosecutors and civil litigators who've never lost a trial. Well, that's because they plea bargain, settle, or don't pursue the cases that they may lose. Senate President John Cullerton often jokes about his years at 26 in California. He says he had a better conviction record than any prosecutor he knew. Well, that was because he was a public defender. <laughs> Folks don't pursue their careers in fear of being, in fear of or paralyzed by failure. Use failure to your advantage. I did. As you can imagine, I received a lot of comments through the years about my predecessor who addressed uh, a group of graduates here some years ago. One of the most fre frequent remarks I get is, you've got big shoes to fill. Well, I admire and respect Barack Obama to have him walk around Washington, D.C. barefooted, so I will allow him to keep his shoes and I'll keep wearing the same shoes that got me to the table in the first place. Barack Obama is a shining example of a successful figure in the field of public service, but I will never attempt to be Barack Obama. LeBron James was smart to not seek to be Michael Jordan. You'll be happier and more successful if you concentrate on being the first and best you, rather than trying to be the next somebody else that the law student syndrome will take you to. So some of you who may not have secured a position yet, or even some who have, may feel that they are not where they pictured themselves at the end of these years in law school. You may be in despair about your investment of time, or effort, or money. It may help you to know that while I put my skills to use in the General Assembly, there are sitting legislators who are now in law school or planning to attend law school because they believe they need the skills that you've already developed. They want to be you. I chair the Senate Judiciary Committee, and every week I see veteran legislators who come before the committee of lawyers with great anxiety because they know they haven't fully thought out the unintended consequences of their well-intended proposals. What I'm trying to say is that right now, at this very moment, you possess something of great value. Your professors have pushed you, and they've helped you develop critical thinking skills and the ability to write and argue persuasively. You've learned to foresee problems, read analytically, and interpret and apply the law. I'm challenging you today not to think of your time in law school as a specialized training that has you set on an expressway with no exits or no roadside scenery to a specific restrictive law practice. You have many roads to explore. I sure explored many of them. And many stops and exits along the way. Your opportunities are vast. I took the road less travel, not always voluntarily, but it truly has made a difference for me and it will for you too, if you possess the courage, curiosity, and confidence to let it. You have earned this moment. Congratulations on your achievement. Now take it and use it to become an advocate and the person that you have always wanted to be. Thank you. We all can all benefit from Senator Rule's words, an inspiration that you can only you can strike out sometimes, but just put yourself in a place, take advantage of an opportunity that may come down the road later. 
Before we conclude today's ceremony, I want to thank Katie Ani and the staff for doing a fantastic job of organizing this event, and I'm sure the reception to follow will be just as great. I also want to thank all of you who are here who grew beards in solidarity with the Blackhawks today. Um, and, but I think more importantly, I would like to ask the 2014 graduates to stand up, to turn around, and to thank your loved ones, friends, and colleagues for helping you get where you are today. This concludes the 2014 Chicago Kent College of Law commencement. I ask the audience to please remain seated until the academic recession concludes. But then again, please join us outside in the tent for a special reception. And once again, congratulations.